Welcome to Exposure Therapy. I'm your host, TJ Kennedy, and today we're going to be taking a look at some of my earliest work as a developing artist when I got my start in photography shooting in the streets of downtown Toronto. Um, my father really was my earliest influence in photography. Um, all of him, him and all of his brothers and uh, a lot of my male cousins on that side of the family uh, are all amateur photographers. My mother's also an amateur photographer, and so they kind of ran in the family, but I didn't really get my start until um, till 2014, 2015. Uh, I was living in the east end of Toronto, and I'd have my cell phone. Uh, I lived up on the top floor of uh, an apartment building that was at the top of a hill in the far east end of Toronto, and I could see the downtown skyline. And uh, usually during sunrises, we got like really beautiful uh, skyline photo um, opportunities there. So I take a lot of photos of my cell phone. And uh, later after that, I moved to uh, right into the core downtown Toronto up on the 29th floor. And so just got kind of really enjoyed taking photos with my, with my cell phone. But um, in 2014, I had met someone that had never been to Niagara Falls before as they were uh, visiting Toronto. And so uh, I traveled with them out to Niagara Falls and they had a Canon Rebel T4i, which uh, I, I, you know, I borrowed to take some of the shots to the falls. And that was actually the first time I experienced shooting with a DSLR. And uh, when I saw the, the viewfinder, so when I saw the LCD screen on the back and I saw the image that I took, uh, I, I, I was immediately, immediately addicted. I was bit by the buck. I, I was immediately, I had a real love with photography. I knew that I had to get my hands on a camera somehow. And uh, this here is the image that I took uh, back then in Niagara Falls. It was really, really, really cold that day. Uh, with the wind chill, I think it was like minus 40 degrees Celsius. So it was super cold. But uh, I was just absolutely enamored with this image. I, I took a few images out of uh, that camera, but this is the one that really, really stuck with me and kind of started really my journey and my obsession with the art of uh, photography and the practice of photography. It's such a such a fun thing, fun thing to do. So that's kind of how I got my start. But um, when I came home from that trip to Niagara Falls, I remember I told my parents. I said, uh, "Well, I went on this trip. I tried the, this camera." I said, man, I, you know, one of these days I got to get myself a camera because uh, that was just so fun and so exciting. And uh, that, that Christmas, that was, I don't know, I think that was February of 20, February of 2014. And then so that Christmas in December of 2014, uh, my parents had purchased a Canon Rebel T5i uh, for me as well as, well, it came with the kit lens, the 18 to 55. And then as well, it had uh, they, they got a telephoto for me, the 55 to 250. Uh, later on, I acquired a 50, uh, nifty 50, a 50 mil 1.8. And uh, also, a, uh, my wife bought me when we were dating, when we first got together, a uh, 18 to 135, just like an F3.5 to 5.6 or, or something like that. But uh, that was kind of the gamut I was using. I, I, I did uh, get a wide angle Sigma lens for that setup, which was at the 10 to 20 mil, uh, 4 to uh, F4 to 5.6. And uh, use that mostly for some some street photography, but mostly real estate photography and stuff. I didn't really actually use the wide angle lens that much. I relied mostly on the fifty one point eight, and then the eighteen to one thirty five uh, was kind of my everyday versatile, you know, duct tape kind of <laughs> situation lens. Right, it was, it was good for most things, even though it didn't really have that uh, real good depth of field. I found for for, for my purpose is it, it was it was really good, but um, that was what I started with. So I'm excited to show you some of my images and uh, some of these, you know, that I don't really display them and they're really available anywhere. So it's just really nice to be able to kind of give <laughs> let them see some light and get some eyeballs on them. So let's uh, let's take a look up here. I also wrote down uh, some of the settings here. Some of the metadata was available in these images for most of them, but there's a few that I didn't get the metadata from. But uh, yeah, so let's see. Uh, <laughs> Let's see uh, down the street to downtown Toronto through the eyes of a budding photographer. So this is uh, south-facing. This is on Yonge Street at Girard, 
Gerard Street, as you can see. And um, this was during a busker festival. So they have uh, every year they have this like world renowned busker festival. And uh, this is just kind of a real good, um, a real good snapshot of what Toronto is. Just hustle and bustle is city and congestion and, and uh, all the cultures under the sun all together in one city, uh, you know, and it's, it's quite an experience to go there. Uh, I moved from there to rural Alberta. You know, I, I, I joke that I went from somewhere that has like the busiest highway in Canada to, and, and, and some of the busiest roads in some of the busiest roads in North America to somewhere where, um, you know, the population's 1800 and the, the closest traffic light is 125 kilometers away. So it's quite a change. Um, but the one thing I will say about Toronto is it provides endless opportunities for uh, amazing, amazing photos. So Toronto is just the gift that keeps on giving for the street photographer. So uh, yeah, I just really love this shot. Just shows the variety of people watching some performance from a street busker, street performer, and you kind of get to see just kind of southward facing uh, towards Lake Ontario and the south side of Young Street and just, uh, just, both sides of the road stacked to the sky with uh, commercial and and uh, and uh, commercial and residential as well uh, properties. So just uh, this is just south of Young and Dundas, or uh, maybe just north of Young and Dundas. I think it's just north of Young and Dundas um, in Toronto. So Dundas Square, which is like Toronto's version of Times Square. So, anyways, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a little trip for you. So uh, I really love this photo. This is one of my earliest photos. Uh, oh, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> Before I get ahead of myself, this one here uh, was shot 100, at 109 millimeters at F5. <laughs> uh, 1125 shutter speed, ISO 800. So that was that. And again, I didn't really... Uh, back, in, it hit, back when I was shooting here, I wasn't really shooting with intention. Um, necessarily, it was kind of more instinctive. I was learning, I was looking at YouTube, I was finding other photographers, asking questions, studying other uh, photographers' work, and and getting to see what I liked, what my style was, and I was just exp just exploring and excited to explore everything. But I didn't necessarily have the technical aspect down. So some of these settings may sound absolutely crazy, um, but at the end of the day, I still love the images regardless. So, anyways, there's that. Uh, this image, there was no metadata available, but I love this. This, I believe, was down on College Street in downtown Toronto. I was just, when I was going on one of my photo walks, and there's a bike repair shop there, and they have those two bikes out front. And I just really liked the color. I liked just the, just kind of all the all the busyness of it, right? All the geometry. You've got the circles, you have the, the lines, the spokes, you have the squares up there in the window. You have the uh, bar, the rectangular bars on the railing. You have the bricks. You have the door. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on here. A lot of shapes, uh, you know, a little bit of color. Just uh, you know, I love pictures with uh, a little bit of texture and geometry. You know, uh, I heard that <laughs> that I read that. Sorry, I read or heard. I cannot remember where I got it from. But the Sebastian Salgado, I said that architects are the cousins of photographers, and I just love uh, you know architectural design and trying to use that you know it just offers so much in 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 street photography so yeah anyways that's this photo the little bike repair shop photo on college street so oh this one okay well one of my photo walks again like a lot of these photos are from uh this is at queen street and this is somewhere in between bathurst and uh spadina downtown toronto if anyone's interested <laughs> And um, yeah, it's just, it's just I think it's like some restaurant or some sort of club uh, that this is just above the door. So this is probably 10 to 12 feet up in the air, uh, stuck on these spikes. Uh, and the spikes, by the way, are designed so birds don't like crap all over the land there, crap all over it, build nests and stuff like that, become a hassle for the business. So that's what the spikes are for. But just having a head up there made it look, there was a guy on a spike. And I just thought that was it was really really cool, and uh, still still to this day one of my favorite photos. Even though I have no idea why that head's there, uh, I never bothered to check. But I just uh, thought it was really kind of just really cool, really funny as well. 
This one here was taken just outside of the Royal Ontario Museum. Uh, just a simple photo. I just, I've always loved, always had a affinity for this one, uh, which is just your old street bike. And of course, when I, when I grew up and I was riding my bikes, you know, I had like an old BMX when I was a really little kid. But uh, high school, I never really had a mountain bike. I always got these speed bikes, these racing bikes, street bikes. I'd ride them on the trails and beat the crap out of them, of course. But uh, I just have, uh, it just brings back a lot of nostalgia. I have the school bus and with a street bike leaning up against there. Maybe that's why it, <laughs> even though as I look at it and, and discuss it, is realize that's why it has that much nostalgia for me because it brings me back to my childhood of uh, school time where I'm riding exactly that type of bike. So, um, yeah, just little simple things like that, you know, that aren't really of any significance or importance. It's a bike and a bus leaning against a street sign in the middle of Toronto. But, uh, you know, it, you can capture, you know, it can capture a feeling for you. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, again, one of my oldest photos, but uh, something I just love about this one. And, again, the technical aspects, you know, it, uh, nothing super, super technical. Oh, my goodness. Again, <laughs> again, it's skipping your head as I'm trying to keep up with my uh, sheet here. So this one back here, my bad, was um, 250 millimeters at F5.6, one 250th of a second ISO 200. And this one, unfortunately, I don't have the metadata for once again, but uh, I, I, I do love that one. Fillmore's. Well, um, <laughs> Toronto has many, many, many uh, gentlemen's clubs, we'll call them strip clubs, and Fillmore's is one of them. That is pretty much just a block away from Dundas Square, where that uh, Busker Festival photo was taken. And again, just if I wasn't working, I had my camera in hand and I was walking around the streets taking photos. So uh, most of these are from photo walks. So this is Fillmore's Hotel. Uh, this photo... Um, was taken at 50 millimeters at F10, one and four hundredth of a second of ISO 100. And uh, I just love all the textures here. I love to see the lines kind of go, you know, that are kind of intersecting the Fillmore's Hotel. Those are streetcar cables uh, for the Toronto streetcar. And uh, I love the sign there. We serve beer as cold as your ex-girlfriend's heart. I believe this was filmed in the, uh, sorry, shot in the summer <clears throat> of 2015. So, uh, you know, despite the, I, I like the texture of the clouds back there, but despite the clouds back there, so uh, pretty warm, pretty warm summer. But uh, I don't know. I like that one. I, I, that's actually, um, <laughs> I cannot confirm nor deny ever having visited any adult uh, entertainment clubs like this, but I can 100% confirm that I have never actually been inside of this one, um, though having walked past it thousands of times, I'm sure. And uh, got this photo, which I, I don't know, just really like this one as well. So good. Yeah. Okay, so there's a story to this one. So I really wanted to do a long exposure of the Toronto skyline. And um, I believe the next photo I'll be sharing, actually, I'll just, I'll just go to that photo now. <laughs> So I wanted to share a photo I long exposure to the Toronto skyline, but I, I didn't own a drone or anything like that. So I had to get crafty and I didn't know anybody that like lived facing the tower where I could like go to their balcony and take a picture. So um, I just borrowed a, you know, maybe a building that was under construction and uh, zipped up to the top and uh, there was a, a rooftop crane there. And so I zipped up not to the edge of it, but just to where the uh, little booth is that the guy sits in. And I put my semi tripod up and put the camera there. And uh, this is, again, the T5i. And um, took a long exposure here of the uh, facing south towards the Toronto skyline. And this was shot at 25 millimeters at F16 for a 30-second exposure. And my ISO was 400. And, you know, took a few shots up there. Um, it was probably about 2, 2.30 in the morning by the time I was taking this just to try and make sure that there's nobody around or that I was going to get in any hot water. And, uh, you know, to this day, it is one of my favorite photos and it also has some 
yeah. you know, has some memory for me attached to it because it was the first time, not the last time, but definitely the first time I scaled up a building to take a photo like this. And um, I admit the rush was a little bit exciting. And so, you know, this kind of became a thing for me. I did a few of these and a few of them have actually sold as uh, as large prints and hang as frame prints in uh, some people's homes. So, uh, you know, I'm proud of this one. It was kind of a first... That wasn't my first long exposure, but it was my first good good long exposure, I think. Today's episode is brought to you by Prairie View Photo Tours. Prairie View Photo Tours invites photographers of all levels to book their all-inclusive, authentic Alberta adventure at pvphototours.com. This one here was at the other end of the city, on the west end of the city, west end of downtown, really, facing, obviously, the CN Towers, you can see. And... This one was at 26 millimeters, F22, one sixth of a second at ISO 400. And this was just basically, like I said, I was out at 2.30, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, something like that to get those shots and uh, lung exposures on the top of the buildings. So, you know, I thought it would be nice to stay out a little bit extra late and get a sun sunrise photo with the sin, get the silhouette of the skyline. Uh, up in front of it so i went to the other side of the city and uh and just waited and just hopped up on the little roof of basically like a uh shop and like a rail yard shop i guess uh where it was easy enough to, to climb up and um got up there and took this long long exposure of the of the sun sunrise in toronto and uh you know i think it's a really pretty photo i'm, I'm colorblind actually and I can't really appreciate the color in the sky, but I still think it is a really, really pretty photo. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of the adventures of uh, jumping up onto roofs in downtown Toronto in the middle of the night to take photos of the city. Um, you know, nobody was hurt in the making of these and uh, <laughs> nobody is the wiser. So uh, one of the areas I moved to in Toronto was really unique in that it had a high concentration of... Um, Portuguese and Italian families that have been there for a long time, like a lot of seniors and a lot of a lot of culture there. And it was side by side with little Jamaica as well. So there's a lot of uh, Jamaican culture as well. And so a lot of different foods, a lot of different music, a lot of different things going on. Um, a little bit of conflict as well. And just really, um, <laughs> really crazy neighborhood uh, to be in. I'll leave it at that for now. Um, but if that was the neighborhood, I would get up and walk around and take some photos in. So I had lived in the beaches in the East End, and then I'd moved to the downtown core. And then when I had met my wife, my now wife, uh, we had moved to this area at Dufferin and Eglinton in downtown Toronto. So, um, or just a little bit east of that actually, I had found at Oakwood more specifically. And so that was right at kind of the the intersection of all of those bones, uh, cultures and stuff like that. So. Uh, really interesting uh, place to live and provided the opportunity for a lot of really interesting photos uh, of which I have uh, a few here and of course I spent a lot of time living there so um, that was where I spent my time walking the streets and taking photos of people of events and of things so uh, this sh photo here is uh, one of my favorites again uh, one of my first time using reflections as kind of in the composition and uh, you know, I like the leading lights here of the of the shelf, and of course, uh, it just interesting focusing on the one mannequin. And this is again little Jamaica, and part of their culture is a lot of the women will have weaves or wigs that they wear. And so this is one of the shops that would sell that. And there's a lot of uh, cultural shops along. When I say cultural shops, the cultural food like they'd have uh, jerk chicken stores, they'd have Jamaican patty stores, there'd be barber shops there, there'd be. Um, these types of stores to be um, African and Jamaican fashion, and uh, so just a lot of a lot of colors and a lot of things to take pictures of. And this was just really really interesting to me. Uh, a lot of different textures too in this because of the different uh, the different hairstyles. So uh, I just always really thought this was interesting. It just caught my eye as I was walking by. Uh, you know, I wasn't looking for any particular thing to shoot, but this just just jumped out to me. And uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I think it's. I think there's a sense of humor in it. I'm not quite sure where, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. It just uh, made me smile, and it still makes me smile uh, thinking about going back to taking it and, and looking at it today. So uh, this one 
was shot at, uh, well, I think this was with my Nifty 50. This is 50 millimeters F1.8, uh, 1 200th of a second, and the uh, ISO is 400 for this one. So I talked about the Portuguese and Italian cultures here. And uh, so just like a block away from where that photo was taken, there's this in front of, in someone's hanging someone's driveway over the garage door. It's, it's a statue of Padre Pio. So there's a lot of Orthodox, a lot of Catholic uh, families in this area, and uh, it's just on full display. And uh, yeah, so I just thought this was really, really interesting. Like, it feels like this is something you would see in Europe. And I guess that's kind of the point, is that a lot of families in this area of Toronto, it feels like they've just been like transplanted directly from, you know, like old school, you know, Portugal, old school Italy, old school, you know, uh, European countries. Um, and uh, the culture is like preserved in like a time capsule here. It's just really, really cool. And uh, it's just really neat to see something like this in a metropolitan city like Toronto. Um, yeah, <laughs> really, really neat. Caught my eye. I thought it was a little quirky. So I snapped the photo. Uh, this one's at 79 mils millimeters uh, f6.3 1 one twenty fifth of the second and at uh, the iso was 100 for this one uh yeah i don't know kind of kind of fun all right this one here uh this one i've actually is an nft available at uh on my open c so you can check out the link on my website um or put the link down in the bio or in the, not in the bio Jeez, i'll put my link down in the video description here um this, uh, I, as I mentioned just briefly a moment ago, I'm colorblind, so I don't really focus on color. I focus on composition and contrast. In cases like this, the color is contrasted, like the complementary colors. And uh, I just, I just, I love how the blue juxtaposes against the yellow. And I love the texture of the brick. Um, I love the fact that there's still <laughs> like a hardcore, like old school, hard wire phone booth. Um, that's not a cellular phone, you know, in modern day Toronto, it's kind of crazy. Like these are all 2015 photos. So, you know, it's, I guess we're almost going on a decade now, but still uh, pretty, pretty impressive. And a yellow one at that on a blue wall, that's just so cool. And this was actually attached to uh, a fried chicken restaurant on the outside facing Eglinton Avenue. Uh, just, just, I think it's at the corner of Eglinton and Glenholm. If anyone's interested, who knows, maybe it's still there. That'd be crazy. If it's still there, let me know, let me know in the comments. If you go there and you see that that's still there. Uh, and this one was shot at 70 millimeters at F5.6, one two hundredth of a second and ISO 400. I tend to... I tend to shoot at one one twenty fifth or one two fifty of a second normally. Um, that tends to be what I do these days. Um, these days I'm shooting mostly portraiture, um, some event photography and stuff like that. But most of it is people. And again, sometimes I go out. Now I'm living in rural Alberta, so I'm not doing urban street photography. My street photography is more, you know, uh, landscape photography or farm animals or you know cool stuff like that or again portraiture uh, as well but uh yeah so it's it's good thank you thanks for joining me on this journey down memory lane investigating and exploring some of my old street photography this one was one of the very very first photos i took and before uh, right now i use lightroom and and uh to do all my editing and i do a little bit in photoshop um but 99.5 percent of what i do is a lightroom and uh this was before I had Lightroom. So um, this one was one of the ones that I don't have the metadata available, but this was just at a park, just a little bit, you know, 10 minute walk from my house at, in Little Jamaica there, Dufferin and Eglinton, or Bonneroke would rather. And uh, I like this because you got lots of shapes and, and geometry going on. You have kind of the rigid squares and kind of triangles and rectangles going on here, diamonds, like all this stuff going on with the tower. You also have the kind of parabolas going with the electrical wires. You have the symmetry of that whole that whole setup, and then you have the textured clouds of behind, kind of broken off into sec like four sections by kind of like lines and light going through. So I just found 
you have horizontal lines in the clouds, you have vertical lines uh, in the wires. They all join up to that kind of gravitating force in the bottom in the middle, which is the power line there. And uh, just, yeah, a simple thing that you see every day on the streets of Toronto, but uh, just shot, I think, in a different way that makes you look at it uh, like it might be art. I remember this taking this photo. I was with day. I was uh, on one of the my dates with my now wife, and we were downtown Toronto. And we just got off the bus or a streetcar. Uh, I can't remember which. I believe it was that doesn't really matter. Maybe it was the bus. And we were at Queen Street, and we were coming down Dufferin. And I just got off, and I looked down, and the the, the stop is under this bridge. And I just looked to my left and I saw these light slits shooting through and it just made just really, really interesting. So I'm like, I got to take a picture of those light slits. And, and, and I didn't even really, when I thought about the phone, I didn't see the, the lady there with her yoga mat in her bag walking alone. And so I, uh, I'm like, okay. So I said to the uh, cat and my wife, I said, I got to go over and take a picture. So I put my camera up and I see this woman walking towards me and I'm like, oh, this is perfect. So I said to her in the frame. Uh, well, <laughs> kind of center her, I, I, you know, I, and again, I wasn't really, I didn't really know about rule of thirds. I didn't know about golden ratio. I didn't know about any of that or any composition tricks. I was just kind of intuitively what looks right and kind of where does the line where I was, the subject to me was more of the light slits than the person in the photo. And so I was just kind of trying to frame them in an interesting way. And she happened to be almost smack dab in the middle, walking so low down that sidewalk towards me. And uh, I just really, really love this photo. Now, uh, in fairness, I did go in. I, this, I, so, so this was also before I had like Photoshop or Lightroom or anything. So I was using a real rudimentary app to go in and kind of uh, dodge and burn by hand out all of the, you know, it would, the, the back was blown out a fair bit to begin with, but there was still a detail. So I just took out all the detail to bring all the focus to the light slits and the person uh, walking up the sidewalk. So, uh, yeah, uh, this does hang also this one as a framed print on someone's wall. So uh, that's really cool. And uh, yeah, so I really, really enjoy this one. So this is one, one of those, uh, one of those lucky beginner's luck ones, I guess. <laughs> so I worked downtown um, at a sports bar. Actually, you can see if you look up in the Matt Damon movie poster there, The Martian, if you look to the left of that, you'll see the beer store, and under that, you'll see something blocked out club. Uh, the word, there's a red S, then there's a pylon and clubs. So there's Shark Club, Shark Club Toronto. So I worked security there <clears throat> for several years uh, when they opened uh, up until about 2017. So this is in 2015. Now, uh, my manager at the club was also a photographer, and we had decided that. We were going to go out after work and go catch a sunset at a beach and take some photos of sunset at the beach. And uh, so I had finished my shift and he was still closing up at the office. So I waited outside at Dundas Square. And there was these girls and their boyfriends who were not in this photo. Uh, where I just, I was just looking at these four people and they were like all lying down on the ground at Dundas Square. And I was like, are these, are these dead people? Like, are they, what's going on? Are they all right? And they can hear some laughter and they're moving around so I can see they're all right. And uh, they uh, they moved closer towards me. And so I'm like, I heard the Irish accents and uh, uh, Irish heritage. I'd just been to Ireland a couple of years before, 2012 and 2013. And, uh, you know, that's a place that felt like home up until I came to Alberta. And uh, it's just a beautiful, wonderful place. And so uh, being of Irish descent as well, I was like, oh, hey, you're Irish, are you accent? We engaged. And uh, they asked, I, I can't, you know, they asked if I would take uh, pictures of them because they saw my camera. And uh, so, yeah, so I was just taking some pictures of them and uh, they were just having fun with it. And I saw these pylons that were on the ground. And uh, I, I think one of them picked them up and like she was putting them like, <laughs> they were being maybe inappropriate with them and uh, I just told them to uh, put them on like hats and so there they did they put them on like hats and uh, as I put my camera up to shoot that one uh, to the blonde girl on the right I uh, fell off to the side so we did have two vertical hats but uh, that's that's quite all right uh, I, I like it as it is so this was just 
a complete random encounter uh, at about 3 30 4 o'clock in the morning uh downtown toronto with some uh, girls that are coming home with their boyfriends from partying for the night and uh, i just got this fun little moment with a couple of irish a couple of irish lasses so um okay this is a photo that i really like and it really i don't like at the same time <laughs> And that is um, because of the composition. So again, photo walk was going downtown. This is at Nathan Phillips Square at Toronto City Hall. You'll see in the background there, you'll see the Toronto sign in front of it. And you'll see these two kind of uh, metal rocker looking uh, couple here on skates, skating <clears throat> uh, Nathan Phillips Square. And this skating rink is actually where my parents met um, for the very first time on New Year's Eve by the Nathan Phillips Square Skating Rink. So there's a little bit of history for you. Um, but yeah, so again, new to photography, I just asked these two people, hey, can I take your picture? They stopped, they posed, snap, and off they went skating, right? I didn't really have a whole lot of time, but I wish I took an extra second to not cut off that guy's hand, his foot. Um, and also, if I could have backed up a bit, maybe got the entirety of City Hall uh, in the shot, that would have been... That would have been great as well. Now, I realize as I'm talking to you, I haven't been telling you about any of the photos and what their metadata is. This is from that 18 millimeters I shot it. So that was likely with the kit lens. Uh, F3.5, 1 to 50th of a second, ISO 200. So uh, I like to start with my lowest ISO possible, uh, ISO 100 typically. And uh, I like to keep my, uh, I'm, I'm normally shooting these days um, with one of two lenses, that'd be my 50 millimeter 1.8, which I keep at 1.8 to 2.8 generally. And my, uh, 28 to 70 F2, which is, I keep at F2, uh, generally next up AJ and Ron Berg Bergundy. <clears throat> so I had, uh, invited my friend, Nick, he's actually another Toronto photographer, Nick Wands. He's an excellent street photographer, an excellent street photographer. Uh, great celebrity photographer, uh, just an all around, uh, nice guy. So, uh, check him out, Nick Wands, W O N S. And we went and shot, uh, another fabulous artist, uh, Brown Man Ali, uh, who is a, an award winning and international recording artist and performing artist. And he was playing at the Toronto, uh, TD Canada Trust, Toronto, downtown Toronto Jazz Festival. <clears throat> That's a mouthful. And, uh, we were on the way back. Uh, Nick and I were on the way back walking from the last performance and we came across AJ here talking to some friends outside of his uh, apartment and so this is I think on Dundas Street and uh, he's just staying outside on the on the sidewalk or on his kind of front step on the sidewalk and uh, just hanging out with his uh, pet bird uh, Ron Birdgundy and AJ uh, was an interesting character I mean he would uh, tell us that he could write anybody a business plan in 30 minutes and uh, <laughs> just a lot of interesting things he had to say, but just really, really, you know, really nice guy. And uh, I took a couple of pictures of him and Ron, <laughs> a prop uh, perched up on his head. But I just, I just, I really like this one the most because it really showed a genuine smile from AJ. I think I caught, you know, I think I caught, you know, just a gen he's just a gentle guy. And I think I really caught that here. And uh, so, yeah, so this is AJ and Ron Burgundy. And, um, I just love this one. I, I contemplated this, uh, doing this in color, black and white because of the yellow bird. But uh, I don't know. I think black and white really, really suits this one. This is, I really like this one. <clears throat> so uh, one of the things I have photographed a, a little bit in uh, downtown Toronto is the homeless population there. And um, a couple of photos I've included here are some of my favorites that I've taken. And uh, this one, like I said, I mean, I'm attracted to photos with composition and contrast and uh, contrast of ideas, contrast of highlights, shadows, contrast of colors as well. So contrast in all sorts of ways. Um, before I get too carried away, this one was shot with my 55 to 250. So this was shot from across the street on Young Street, just north of Shooter. Uh, Shooter Ave or Shoot, Shooter Street or Shooter Ave, I can't remember, downtown Toronto. So it's just across the street, just at the north end of an intersection. And um, we shot at F5.6, 1 200th of a second, SO200, just for those who want to know. 
But um, the contrast to this, as you see the desperation in her face, you can see she's just kind of uh, kind of out of sorts with her shoe, one shoe off, one shoe on, sitting down on the road. Um, you know, she has that paper cup uh, asking for any sort of money. And on the logo on the cup is actually a TD Bank logo, which I just found there's a little bit of like irony. I want to say humor. It's not funny, but there's a little bit of a humor in it in that it's, um, you know, it's a cup uh, purposed for receiving uh, change and cash and money and whatever donations. And it has a it has like a bank's logo on it. But the person is just, it looks destitute. And you can see the shadow of the person walking by, the, the hands down there, and just kind of like nobody sees her. She's just kind of like invisible. But the highlights there just kind of put a spotlight on her. And, uh, you know, even for a brief moment, we do see her, you know? <clears throat> and uh, I don't know. Uh, I saw this photo, and or I saw this uh, po you know, potential to take an image, and uh, I don't know. I think, it, I think it worked out. In downtown Toronto, there are a lot of um a lot of people that are um are homeless or unhoused they are uh you know for all sorts of reasons um and but there's also um there's also a lot of scammers and you know i don't want to be cynical but i i can only say that because i got scammed i remember uh one time when i was uh back in the early days when i was in college and I was, or high school, even. jeez, I was in high school. And I was with a, a church group, and we were downtown Toronto uh, doing uh, kind of like our street missions or whatever. And saw a, a guy, homeless veteran, homeless veteran sitting in a wheelchair. And a uh, sign said like something like injured in Vietnam or whatever the case. I think it was actually Vietnam. He quoted it, you know, hungry, you know, any help, God bless, stuff like that, whatever the sign said. And so I'm like, hey man, and I, I even then I didn't want to like just give money. So I'm like, hey man, uh, we're gonna go grab something. To eat. You want to come get a burger with us? Go to Burger King or whatever. So he's like, yeah, absolutely. So we went, we sat with him, had a meal, and then uh, we said our goodbyes, and we leave. And like a half hour later, we walk around the corner, and I see this guy jump out of his wheelchair like over a railing, and like, and then just, and like hustle down a flight of stairs. And I was like. <laughs> You got me. Got a meal out of me. All right. <laughs> fair, fair to you. Fair game. <laughs> Anyways, uh, where was it? Okay. Well, uh, one of the other uh, homeless waters is up in downtown Toronto here. This was at Anna Avenue and Queen Anne Avenue, or Queen Anne University, rather. Uh, Avenue, so University Avenue becomes Avenue Road as you move north through the city, but midway through the city. But uh, downtown here, it is University Avenue. And uh, there's a big fountain here, and a big obelisk in this fountain, and a statue with with you know angel wings pouring out, and there's water spreading. It's just a beautiful display, and it's a really high traffic area. And um, there was this gentleman there, just sitting down, hanging out, just casually nonchalant, chilling out with his feet in the uh, in the in the fountain. And uh, so I just took, and I just thought. I thought at the time, I'm like, he looks really interesting. This like small human next to this huge plant, you know, just chilling out with his feet in the fountain. Why were his feet in the fountain? That's weird. And so I took a picture and I looked, I'm like, he's got just soap all over. Where's that soap coming from? And then I realized just by his right hip there, there's a tiny little like travel shampoo bottle, travel size shampoo bottle. And he was washing his feet in the fountain. And uh, it just looks like he's just enjoying the sunlight there, chilling out with his feet in the fountain, getting getting his feet clean. And I just thought, like, that is such a peculiar thing. Uh, but it makes perfect sense. And, uh, and juxtaposed against those huge plants, um, right in, like, this busy part of downtown Toronto. So I just thought it was a really, really interesting photo. And I love it when there's little gifts like that in the photos. Like, I don't – when I took the photo, I wasn't conscious of the little shampoo bottle. And it was only after when I was studying the image that I see that, and it made me laugh. I'm like, I love it when photos have little, tiny little details that you won't catch unless you really, really inspect it closely. And uh, that's, what I, that's what I really like about this one. 
Uh, also, none of these, none of these photos are uh, are posed. None of these photos are posed. So they're all just oh, well, except that's not entirely true. Yeah, this this one was posed. This one was posed, and that's it. So those two were posed. Uh, none of them the that. This one, I was taking a picture of him, but he wasn't posed. And, uh, of course, this one and this one were not posed. So um, I like to take more candid than I do post photos. These days I do a mix of both. Um, but, yeah, this is, uh, you know, trying to, trying to create, sorry, trying to capture a moment rather than create a moment, I think, is something that I aspire to do uh, because that's the, you know, one of my other obsessions is jazz, is, is uh, classic jazz, jazz music. Uh, I am a complete, complete, absolute jazz nerd. And um, I, I almost don't listen to almost any other type of music. I'm just completely obsessed with it, uh, just as much as I'm obsessed with photography. Uh, I guess it's just a personality trait. And uh, they improvise, right? They have a structure that they kind of loosely cling to uh, or abide by. Uh, they have a set of rules that they kind of all know that they can all kind of play the same game. They can kind of, you know, and then they can make magic together. You know, someone playing, uh, just making something off, off the top of their head and spur of the moment and just being that creative force is just really, really exciting and it's a real rush. And so with photography, I love doing that as well. That's a super rush is just not going out with a plate in your hand necessarily, not just having your camera on hand, not knowing where you're going to see and just just having that amazing thing just happen right in front of your eyes and just you're capturing that moment that can never be replicated again and that's this beautiful thing because even when ai can make these amazing photos that could take us out of work they can't capture a real moment and that to me is the difference and that's why to me capturing a moment is more important for me to do than creating a moment because it's a genuine human thing and it's a beautiful thing and it's 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 real. It's real. It's like the most real thing. Sorry to go down that little rabbit 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 uh, hole with you there. Okay, so this one was real fun. This is out uh, at Ryerson University in downtown Toronto at Young and Dundas again. <clears throat> and there's a little emptied out uh, little like display pond here that becomes an ice rink in the winter. <clears throat> but this is just before a um, this is just before a art festival, so it's an art installation, and I just really loved the juxtaposition of the small people and the big people. Right? You have, um, I think it's Edgar Bergman, Martin Luther King, and Andy Warhol in the background there, and underneath them you have a couple of worker guys set up the art display, and uh, it's just I just found the contrast of the size of the big people and the little people uh, was just, again, a wonderful little humorous little image that the universe said, here you go. <laughs> you know, it just, it just gave to me. Like, I, I couldn't have created this. And I just think this is a funny photo. And, uh, you know, it was just a gift, a gift, a gift from the, uh, you know, <laughs> as I said, a gift from the universe. So, well, that's, um, that's basically just a walk down memory lane, exploring some of my early street photography, and when I was learning how to shoot and just developing that passion again, that 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 I think the addiction really was from that first shot of the of Niagara Falls right here, um, and just bit by the bug. And I, I you know I got more heavily involved in shooting with my cell phone after that, um, but uh, at the time uh, a camera was kind of out of my out of my budget, so out of my out of my reach. And so to get one as a Christmas gift for my parents was just uh, an amazing gift. And uh, just basically launched me into what is now my full-time career on the other side of the country, um, you know. And so I'm just really, really, really thankful to uh, to be able to to do this for a living. I'm really thankful to be able to come onto YouTube and share, you know, uh, my photos with you, but also uh, your photos with you, uh, other photographers, and the stories behind their work, and and uh, you know, just hear what they're trying to say uh, through their work, you know. It's important to speak through your work, and uh, I hope I hope you enjoyed uh, today's episode and and got something from uh, going down this with me. So appreciate you. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on Exposure Therapy. Uh -huh.